I recently changed all the smoke detectors in my house and I came across something very interesting that I thought I'd share with you guys. Americium. Okay, here we have a FireX uh, Kitty smoke detector, which you can buy at any hardware store. I got this one at Home Depot. And we'll open up the box. And it comes with this little plastic hairnet on it. Which I thought, that's odd. Is it susceptible to dust? So upon doing some further research, I found out that these particular fire, fire smoke detectors contain americium, a byproduct, a decay byproduct of plutonium. So when you take this thing off, as I have been doing, before you install it and you jiggle it around up there, trying to put it in, there is an exposure risk to americium. Just thought you might like to know. These smoke detectors contain, albeit small, quantities of ionizing radiation. You know, the byproducts from nuclear power plants that are so toxic, they have to be stored in a facility like the WIP facility in Carlsbad, New Mexico, and we all know what's happening down there. But americium is as toxic as plutonium. And your smoke detectors, as I'll show you, contain small amounts of this ionizing radiation product contained in a five millimeter diameter metal container in powder form in these smoke detectors. Let's see what the CDC says about americium and its exposure. Okay, I'm going to leave a link for this page in the description section of this video so you can look it up yourself. It says, how can it hurt me? As a dust or a fine powder, which is the form it is used in smoke detectors, americium-241 can cause certain cancers. When americium-241 powder is swallowed, absorbed through a wound, or inhaled, it can stay in the body for decades. Now keep in mind, americium-241 has a half-life of only 432 years. So after that, it's not that big of a deal, because then it decays into neptunium-237, which is a little safer. I went out on the web and tried to find some numbers for um, cancer rates for those workers who work in these factories that manufacture these ionizing smoke detectors. And I wasn't able to find those specific numbers. I would have thought OSHA would have them, but they were not available. But I did find this paper put out by Environmental Assessment of Ionizing Chamber Smoke Detectors Containing Americium-241. The paper was published and put out in 1979 when the big push for new construction as well as um, apartments and major renovations, upgrades to homes mandated that you had to have smoke detectors in them. And what I did find on page seven was a very interesting statement that was made by this committee, which said that a comparison number, a comparison of these numbers illustrates the relatively small risk involved in using americium-241 in ICSDs. And of course, they note that there are 370,000 cancer deaths per year in the United States, whereby actual deaths caused by exposure to the ionizing radiation in these smoke detectors is negligent when compared to how many lives the smoke detectors save. I did some further digging and found that users and manufacturers who utilize americium-241 as well as other radiological materials under the ICSO are exempt from regulations. In a paper entitled Requirements for Distribution of Nuclear Byproduct Material published by the NRC on July 25th of 20. 
12. There are over 100 references in this 32-page report on specific exemptions of certain radiological materials used in manufacturing. Hmm. This, is, this kind of um, reminds me of back in the 50s and 60s when it was determined that fluoride, an extremely toxic byproduct of the aluminum manufacturing industry, was deemed by the EPA even too hazardous to put in landfills, uh, much less um, let be run off in manufacturing uh, facilities into the groundwater or stream waters and stuff like that. So what did the FDA turn around and do? They authorized it to be put in our drinking water, in baby formula, in toothpaste, so what better get way to get rid of it than to tell the public it's perfectly safe and good for you and inject it into the water system. Seems like they're taking a similar approach with this byproduct of um, plutonium, americium-241, which is just as toxic, just as deadly as plutonium. So, in conclusion, if you're going to be working with one of these, you might also want to be working with one of these. Oh, and by the way, nothing in this booklet neither explains the content of americium in this device here, or does it explain the covering and the purpose of this airtight covering on the unit.